next topic, building a regional fintech startup and scaling across Southeast Asia. Please help me in welcoming the next speaker, Kun Punamad Wishit Kun Wong Sa, the CEO of Ascend Group Company Limited and True Money Company Limited, along with the director of the Tiger of Meko, Mike Ducker. Good morning, everyone. It's great to be here. Um, thanks for your time. So I'll, I'll spend the first seven minutes of this session just to talk about um, who we are and why it matters what we do. And I'll invite Mike to come up and talk about you know, in our fire chat session. Uh, I represent Ascent Money. And what Ascent Money does, let me see if it's, okay, let's see if it's glow. Yep, oh, just one sec. Okay, so now, now you saw the, the, the rest of my deck. Um, what SM Money does, we have very important missions that we want to accomplish. The, the missions that we go after is to enable everyone access to innovative financial services leading to a better life. And why is this important? Because we strongly believe that financial services is a basic human right. Without it, your life is very limited. Meet Tata. Tata is a mother of two. She's a Myanmar the person, citizen, living in remote area of Kayan State, just current state next to Thailand. And Tata, just like many of her colleagues, and in fact, a large population in Southeast Asia, that she has very low saving. Um, she has no bank. The closest bank to her is about two hour commute. And when you enlarge this problem, there's about 60% of Southeast Asian populations that live without any bank account. Tata, like most of us, have no investment. The investment is simply too outreach, too difficult. In fact, those of us in this room, we are very few. We are less than 1% who may have some kind of investment. The remaining 99% have no investment at all. So if we don't work, the money doesn't work for us. More importantly is that Tata has no access to capital. She, when she wants to do things that beyond her saving, whatever cash savings she may have, like opening up a mom and pop shop, she has to borrow. But she can't borrow because no one will lend to her. And like 80% of the rest of Southeast Asian, um, they have to borrow from other means, from friends, family, and unfortunately, loan shark, who usually charge about 20% or more per month just to lend them money. And once you get into loan shark ecosystem or loan shark wishes cycle, you never get out. Because simply paying for interest, you never pay for principal. And they live their life with risk. When her kids fall sick and state hospital may not be able to serve them, what does she have to do? She has to borrow money from loan shark to pay for their kids' hospital bill. And that's like 85% of the rest of Southeast Asian who have no insurance at all. They live their life with a lot of risk. Now, even among those of us who are considered bank, we still have a lot of problems. We, for the young ones, they lack their credit history, so they cannot borrow easily. The um, banks or financial service provider institution have stringent requirement when you want to apply for loan when you want to start investment, you better have the at least you know, certain amount. Uh, in Thailand, you usually start with about 10,000 uh, Thai baht to start a bank account, uh, to start an investment account. And it's a complicated process, right? You, know, you apply, as an SME, loan, um, SME owner, you apply and you wait at least two or three days at good, and at worst, you wait for weeks. We want to solve that. Now, even those that have access, and even those that get the um, services today, like these two guys, Mr. Sombat and Mrs. Somchai, they are the same age, 35 years old. They both have two kids. One, they um, drive about 70 kilometers per hour, uh, seven, yeah, seven kilometers per day, and at a speed of 100 kilometers per hour because he lives far. You know, he, he lives far and he, he has a pretty reckless life. He hang out at night, come home two in the morning. While the other guy, same age, two kids, 
uh, but drive only five kilometers, live very conservative life, work in city, and because of traffic, drive quite relatively slow, a lot slower. But as you know, these two guys pay exactly a very similar car premium. The society today, because of the existing system, the good persons need to subsidize for the not so good person. And that's the injustice, that's the unfair that happened today. This problem enlarged throughout Southeast Asia. You know, huge pain point and therefore huge opportunity. 620 million um, and a lot of young people, 70% are under 40 years old and a lot of underserved, 60%. And yes, they are digital savvy. And if you count smartphone, then they're about 60%. But even if you count data user, then this is fast increasing. The data, the data that we see is about 40% up are using data. What does True Money, the, the, my company, do? The, we, what we do is that we want to be the best financial services platform connecting a large set of users, the underserved, digital consumer, and the unbanked, to the, good, uh, the great set of financial services provider on the right-hand side, the, um, starting from online payment, buying things online, mobile top-up, bill payment, and various things, you know, movie ticket, whatever, and then offline payment, which we started already with convenience store, there are many other retail. Um, in the near future, lending, investment, and insurance will come. The heart of it is about the data that we collect and able to provide better justice to the system where the good ones that will pay less and remove our inefficiency in the system through the data analytic for things like credit rating, fraud protection, and the way we do it, how we do it, is through the, um, by serving up the two key channels. For digital consumer, obviously, it's the, through mobile, our wallet service. And we call it service because it exists in terms of application and also in terms of mobile web. Importantly, for the unbanked populations, the many people may think that the unbanked will be digital and therefore they adopt digital money very quickly that only partially true. Those that are digital doesn't mean that they become digital money quickly. In fact, many of my own relative, and I'm sure as yours as well, is that they use Line, they use WhatsApp, but they don't use mobile banking because they simply don't trust their banks. So for us, agents provide a very important role. We set up these agents look exactly like this one or very similar to this one throughout Southeast Asia. Today, we have over 50,000 of these agents um, that operate business um, on our behalf, doing transactions with our, uh, with our target users. And they're earning money. The, as an example, in Cambodia, where today we process about 10% of GDP of the country, or approximately about 150 US dollar, 150 million US dollar per month, on run rate to be about um, close to 2 billion US dollar. On average, our agents earn 200 US dollar per month just become our agents. And that 200 dollar compared to a new graduate from engineering school, that's quite decent. So we provide livelihood to our agents, the 50,000 of them throughout Southeast Asia and fast expanding so that they can serve our target customer better. So that's approximately you know, I want, what I want to share, the, what we do and why it matters. Uh, let me now invite my colleagues, the uh, Mike, who we will do a fire shot. Thank you. Wow, wow, that, that was impressive numbers and incredible, uh, have a seat please. Incredible uh, opportunity that, that I, what you see and feel across Asia. Um, and there's lots of problems you're trying to solve. Where are you right now on you know, as far as the products, what problems are you focused on today? And what do you see sort of the, the next sort of intermediate plans on, on solving some of these big issues in the, in the sort of intermediate future? Sure, the, so today we, we focus on payment. The, and simply because payment is the, the from the consumer standpoint, is the, um, one of the biggest problem, right? The, um, you know, we have customers that have to walk very far, you know, commute far just to pay a simple bill. And even for us, in digital consumer, most of us, we, we pay bill late 
um, or forgot bill simply because we don't. It's not that we don't have money. We have we don't have time, or we forgot. So we we solving the payment layer first, and because of this payment, we able to collect significant amount of data. For example, we don't need we don't need to know income of a person, but as long as we know um, most of their bill payment throughout our system, um, then we can estimate the what what could be their income because obviously people um, you know, an average person wouldn't pay bills more bills than their income right so we are doing payment um, after payment and we started the some of it already that is the lending that we have start doing the SME lending the for companies that we have advantage on data seeing their transactions going through our system the, um, and obviously uh, lending has many many the type of lending the, um, and then later on investment and insurance. Really, you're trying to capture a lot of the value chain of the financial transaction and, and history and infrastructure of that, as, as I understand. Yeah, yeah. So, the, um, so we want to be the, the platform. We don't see ourselves as a first party financial service provider. Some we need to do ourselves because it's to get the confident and get the momentum, the initial critical mass of user going. But after that, it's all about third party services that we provide. Yeah. Uh, amazing. Um, I heard that you have um, a special strategic relationship with Alipay. Do you right. do you want to talk about that and share some information? Sure. Yeah. So Alipay invested in our company about a year back, and uh, they are minority shareholder. The, um, in fact, in in the previous sessions, the one um, that the panel discussed about the, um, how do we compete with the like of the BAT, and for us, it's very clear that we got to partner. You know, even though that we may have certain advantage in the local. Um, and it's find the combinations of the local aspect and the, the um, Chinese and international know-how. That, that would be the right formula. When it comes to financial services or fintech, the, um, well, financial services. Financial services, is a lot of it is a local business. And when you look globally, the top, three, uh, the top, the top banks in any country except in a very small sp state country, the, um, almost every country is a local bank, it's not global bank, because banks it's a local business, financial is a local business. You need to have trust, feel, access, especially for the unbanked populations. How do you get cash into the system? So for us, the fintech, we, um, there's a great combination of local aspect and the best of technology know-how, where Alipay help us with technology know-how, business know-how. You know, how do we do fraud protection? Um, and it sounds boring, but it's so critical, right? You know, the, um, a lot of fintech companies the, um, need to pay more and more attention into how you protect your risk, how you protect your fraud, the, um, because that can take away, that's that can wipe out the whole thing of your business. The, um, so Alipay has been a great partner for us. Yep. Um, let me ask a controversial question. Um, I was uh, told by someone that maybe. You have, a, a, because you have some uh, strategic relationships with 7-Eleven um, and, and other sort of cash out, cash in centers, that maybe you've locked up the market and you sort of have this market power now in the distribution channels. Uh, can, can you respond to that? Sure. Um, I think it, it's about partnership, right? You know, how do you, fi how do you find partnership? The payment business is not a standalone. You got to build your ecosystem. And for us, luckily, we have our brother sister company who that we share the same um, shareholder. Um, and then with that, that we, we want to build critical mass. Um, but just like any relationship, if you don't do a good job, obviously our brother sister company won't, um, you know, won't, won't, won't foregone their opportunities uh, by just, just doing exclusive with us. Um, and over time, the exclusivity will, will, will may disappear, right? You know? so, um, so the key thing is about we need to build our ecosystem um, with the key partners very, very quickly. And this exists in every market. Um, in royalty network, um, usually you, you, once you sign up with one network, you don't sign up with another network, for example. Sure. Um, you, you mentioned Cambodia and the success you had there. I saw in the presentation. And I was recently there and incredibly impressed with the country. From a sort of policy perspective, is there something Cambodia is maybe doing that other countries in the region are not that sort of opened up, you know, the ability for more people to get sort of these financial services in their hands. Sure. Yeah. So um, Cambodia is is a great country where the government um, realized that the problem of financial inclusion is huge, 
And the role that they should play is to stay passive and not uh, blocking anything, right? And that that's may sound a bit odd. Um, some countries that we operate in, the, um, the countries are active or the, um, the DY up license so particular, right? I'll give you an example, Indonesia. Indonesia, they DY up. If you want to do the money transfer the, um, with over digital means, yeah, like app to app, like e-wallet, that you get one license, yeah, which we have. Now, if you want to do over the counter, it's the same service, but simply do it over the agent network, then you need to get another license, right? The, um, other countries don't have that, you know? So, the, um, so Indonesia, there's very stringent, uh, the, or historical reasons, the, um, they have many, many different type of license, and that makes the, the um, for innovations, um, the, 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 the rightfulness innovations um, to s happen more difficult. The, and the way I say rightfulness is that, yes, we can just go ahead and, and do it against law, right? And hopefully consumer will love us and they will defend against us. But when it comes to financial services where there are systematic risks in the country, um, that cannot be operated. Now, Cambodia, the, they realize that, yeah, the government or central bank cannot catch up with innovations so they stay passive. Um, and as long as you don't, you mean, um, you know, player like us, don't create systematic risk. You know, we do report the numbers. They say it's okay. And you know, once, once you go up to a certain stage, certain size, then come back and tell us what license you may need, right? Or what license the country may, um, you know, should grant so that new players um, will operate on the similar um, system, uh, syst uh, on, on a similar the risk um, profile at the end, it doesn't create systematic risk that cause um, you know consumer citizens to be concerned. It, it's incredibly impressive. Um, there's a lot of startups here um, doing it in in a lot of different industries, um, trying to create some you, you trying to leverage some p payment platform. How do they engage with you? How can they experiment with you? How can they work with you? Sure. Yeah. For us, our business model is about being the financial service platform. The definition of platform is to connect users with the, the um, you know, with other financial service provider. So the, we have the, um, we have standard the model that we we have you know open API up on a technology platform standpoint that provide things that the um, other startup or financial service provider don't need to do, like customer acquisitions. Today we have the, um, just in Thailand alone we have over millions of active users every month the, on our the, um, service, the, um, and. Uh, for many startups, just acquire user is so expensive. And yes, we as consumer, everyone knows it by now, right? How many apps do you have on your phone? You don't want to hit download yet another apps. So having a, a platform is very important, and we very much welcome and open to you know um, to a uh, service provider who can provide great use case and leverage our um, active user base um, and the data analytic platform to create value. Is is there an email, website, yeah, phone number yeah, that they should they should contact someone. Yep, definitely website. The, um, you know, we have um, a, a Facebook fan page. You know, you can contact there. We constantly checking, right? Perfect. Um, let let me ask you this: as a, as an American, and I don't feel like our financial services have changed a lot in the last twenty so years. Um, but this this event has been just sort of eye opening. On there's a new wave coming. And it might start here in Asia and, and somehow work itself west. Um, do you, I mean, what should be what should we as Amer uh, me and my colleagues as Americans should be worried about maybe in the future of how this might actually um, be very Asian driven versus sort of the Western driven and the technology front? Yeah, you mean in, in this area? Yeah. Yeah, in, in this part, I, I think the innovations um, that um, that come out from China. The, um, it's it's more applicable, and and at the end, it's it's about value exchange, right? You know what value what value creations, the, um, and what value exchange you give to consumers for consumers to give you certain things, um, and it comes down to the way that you, you you think about financial services. In the U.S., financial services has been around and evolved um, for so many years, for over hundreds of years, pretty well established, where it um, it think as a pretty much silo, right? You think a deposit product. Uh, even for the payment part itself, um, you think of financial services. You don't think uh, as a part of the commerce um, value chain. 
when, when you have the, um, the like of Chinese, really think financial services from a different angle. What is payment a part of? Payment is a part of, it's a, it's a form of value exchange. It's a part of commerce, the, um, you know, commerce value chain. So if you do payment, why, why do you stop at payment, right? Why don't you extend into royalty? Because there's already not indications to buy, but you bought already. And can a payment company that create memberships, royalty program as a service to brands, to merchants? And with that, and communication channels between the, um, the companies and the, the platform and the users, can the platform become a lead generation business, right? The, um, you know, interest generations, and therefore bring consumers back to commerce. And this is how the Chinese do it. And that's why the, um, the, the WeChat pay ecosystem, the, the Alipay ecosystem. And I think the, um, certainly Southeast Asia will evolve in that front. And, and I wouldn't be surprised at other parts of the world as well. Last question. Um, I hear you're a hard worker. I, I, my last email I sent out at 11.15 last night. Right. W when did you send out your last email last night? <laughs> yeah. um, last night was about midnight. Uh, 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 yeah. uh, midnight, so I'm, I'm sure you're a tough guy to work for. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, at the end, it's about speed, right? You know, I mean, we, we, have, we can have the greatest mission, we can have the greatest strategy, uh, and we can may even have the, the, you know, a great team, but if you don't work hard, then we wouldn't make it, right? So the, those need to be aligned. And that's why I, I, the, I, I tell our team is that, look, you know, we, we have certain advantage, but the next guy, they work harder. I think Elon Musk said, right? Even if you do exactly the same thing as our competitor, but I work 20% harder than them, 30% no, harder than them, I'll get there 30% faster. So the, we got to be in the right directions, strategy, and then work extremely hard. Okay, well that's advice to the crowd here. Yeah. Don't go out tonight. Keep working till 1 a.m. <laughs> if you want to do 20% better. Thank you so much Thank for you, your Mike. time. Thank Bye you. now. Thank you.